Okay, so uh, we're taking a deep dive today into uh, Peacock's new series, The Day of the Jackal. Um, Ooh, exciting! Yeah, it's a you know it's based on the classic thriller. Yeah, and um, and so I'm kind of curious to see how they reimagined it, you know, for like a modern audience. What really stood out to me in the in the review I was reading was this shift from the original's political target to like something in the tech world. Oh, that's really interesting actually, because if you think about the original Day of the Jackal, it was made what, back in the 70s? Mm -hmm. So it really tapped into all those anxieties of the Cold War, you know, political assassinations, shadowy figures pulling strings, that was like the big fear. But now things are different, right? I mean, the whole landscape of power has shifted. We're all worried about data, who controls it, how algorithms like shape our lives and the influence of these massive tech companies. So by making the target a tech mogul, the series is tapping into something much more current, something we're all a little bit afraid of, honestly. Right, yeah. I mean, it stars Eddie Redmayne as the Jackal. And uh, he's hired to take down this tech visionary. He's played by Khalid Abdallah. And this guy's created software that exposes corporate corruption, like all the dirty secrets. And then you've got Lashana Lynch. You know her from No Time to Die. Oh yeah, of course. She's the MI6 agent who's trying to stop the Jackal. The review I read described it as having this like, Bond-like grandeur, and I'm like, okay, what does that even mean in this context? Is it just like, you know, fancy action scenes, or is it something more than that? Well, I mean, think about those those classic Bond moments, the sweeping scores, the exotic locales, that feeling that, like, the fate of nations is at stake. This series seems to be taking all of that, that aesthetic, that scale, and grounding it in the world of tech and data. So instead of a secret agent fighting global threats, it's a lone wolf assassin, right? navigating this world where information is the weapon. And it's directed by Ronan Bennett, who's known for like really gritty crime dramas, like Top mm. Boy. He's good at portraying characters who are driven by ambition, not necessarily morality. So you know it's gonna be intense. Yeah. I mean, the review did mention that while the beginning and the end of the series are strong, the middle kind of gets bogged down with like side plots. Oh. They've got a whole bunch of characters. Richard Dormer plays an arms dealer. Ursula Corbero has got this mysterious role. And it sounds like their stories might distract from the main narrative a bit. Is that a common problem with these like uh, longer format series, do you think? I mean, yeah, it's a tricky balance to strike. Because in a thriller, you know, pacing is everything. You want to keep the audience on the edge of their seats, wondering what's going to happen next. If the story wanders too much, you lose that that sense of agency. Right. Side plots and extra characters, they can add depth and richness to the world, but they can also dilute the tension. It's like putting too many spices in a dish. You end up losing the original flavor. Yeah, that's a great analogy. So, okay, we've got this classic thriller, but it's been updated for the digital age. You've got this tech focused plot, a fantastic cast. And it sounds like it's trying to tackle some pretty big questions, you know, about power and transparency. The big question for you as the viewer is, does it pull it off? Does it keep that thrilling momentum or do the side plots get in the way? I guess you'll have to watch and find out. Definitely adding it to my watch list. Me too. Sounds like it's going to be a wild ride. Okay, that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for listening. See ya. See ya.